Welcome back my fellow radiation nerds. Today we're taking a closer look at the FS5000 meter and whether it is the ultimate budget Geiger counter. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming uploads. Thanks and now back to the video. For a very long time, I had a serious problem with answering one of the most common questions in the field of amateur nuclear physics. Which cheap Geiger counter would I recommend? On one hand, there are plenty of cheap Chinese meters, but in most cases they are honestly of a very low quality. They suffer from low measuring ranges, slow averaging times, and bad Geiger Müller tubes that are not sensitive and can be prone to UV pollution. On the other hand, there are professional devices such as SC International Radiation Alert Ranger, which are absolutely fantastic, but they cost nearly 10 times what the cheap Chinese meters do, and they are hard to recommend to someone who is just starting out even if these meters are definitely worth the price. So the question is, is there a budget-friendly meter that can be bought brand new and that performs decently? Well, the Bosin FS5000 might be just the right answer. The FS5000 is a very budget-friendly Geiger counter produced by Bosin. While they are available on Amazon for around 70 to 80 euro, I would recommend picking one up from the official Bosian AliExpress store site, as they are a bit cheaper there, usually costing around 50 euro. And the only downside is that the delivery will take a few days longer. The meter has a very simple design, which I really like. And unlike some other cheap Chinese meters, the FS5000 doesn't look cheesy or anything like that. It feels like a proper measuring device. The body of the unit is made out of plastic, which feels pretty decent but I would still avoid dropping it and handle it with care, as it doesn't come with any type of carrying case. The user interface is pretty intuitive, and the menus are simple to navigate. The measurements are displayed on a large screen which is decently bright and can be easily used in a bright daylight. There's also a speaker with audible clicking sound, which is a great bonus, but it isn't very loud and can be hard to hear in some noisy environments, and the LED on the top of the meter only flashes when the alarm gets triggered. The device runs on an internal rechargeable battery, which should last for about 5 days according to the manufacturer. While the battery life is pretty good, I would prefer if the unit used standard AA batteries which can be easily and quickly swapped out in the field. The Geiger Müller tube used by this meter is the J321, which is a Chinese glass tube, and it is… okay. It gives around 20 counts per minute of background, and it is able to detect hard beta, gamma and extra radiation. Compared to other Chinese tubes, it is definitely much better, but I still wouldn't call it an ideal design. On the back of the unit, there are small openings in the body, which allow better particles to reach the Geiger Müller tube. However, there is no beta shield, which is a big bummer as it makes all the dose readings in microsieverts an hour pretty much pointless, as the beta activity will highly inflate them. I would really like to see a removable beta shield like on the Terra P meters added to the future models. Luckily, there is a counts per minute and even counts per second mode, but with low sensitivity of the J321 tube, I think the counts per second is really unnecessary, and I will just stick to using counts per minute. When considering the FS5000, make sure that the listing explicitly states that the meter comes with the J321 and not some other generic Giga Miller tube. While reading through some forums, I noticed that some of these meters came with alternative tubes, which have much worse performance and should be avoided. So. How does the meter perform? I tested my FS5000 against some of my sources, which include a negative ion pendant, a forium gas mantle, a coin made out of lutetium metal, and a high-grade uranium ore. As mentioned previously, the FS5000 doesn't have a beta shield, which makes the dose rate readings pretty much irrelevant. So I will be using counts per minute, as they display the raw data from the detector. Keep in mind that counts per minute are dependent on the tube used by the meter, and the results measured with J321 will be vastly different from the ones measured with LND7311 found in my Ludum 44-9 probe, which I normally use. First up is the negative ion pendant, which contains a small amount of forum 232 The FS5000 measured pretty low activity and it took the meter a while to calculate and show the final result, which was only 50 counts per minute. Not an ideal result. The forum gas mantles are a pretty common check source, and this time the FS5000 had no problems in detecting them, and I got around 450 counts per minute. Definitely a much better result than with the pendant. Most budget meters struggle with detecting low-activity samples, 
This lutetium coin contains 0.22 grams of radioactive lutetium-176, which has an activity of 440 becquerels. It is a very low activity sample, but detectable with my more sensitive meters. The FS5000, however, struggled with detecting it. The readings eventually did go up by a few counts, but it took a while and I don't think I would be able to detect it in the field. Unfortunately, the FS5000 failed this test. Lastly, I tested the meter against a piece of high-grade uranium ore and it had absolutely no problem in detecting it, but it took over a minute before the final result stabilized. As we discovered, the main issue in most of these cheap Geiger counters is a bad firmware. It usually has slow averaging time which doesn't adjust to sudden changes in activity, resulting in very slow calculations of the measurements. When compared to my RACID or my MKS meter, the FS5000 doesn't even come close. This is a serious issue which always made me recommend against buying cheap Geiger counters. Luckily, the community in this hobby is absolutely fantastic and a guy called the GCO wrote a custom firmware called the RAT Pro, which addresses most of the issues. After installing it, the FS5000 became much more responsive to sudden changes in activity and the new firmware also brought a bunch of new features, which really elevate the usability of the meter. The only real downside of this new firmware is that the device eats through battery much more quickly, but I think it is a worthy sacrifice and hopefully this can be addressed in the future update. I definitely recommend checking out this firmware if you have one of the Chinese meters. I have included a link to it in the video description. The Boston FS5000 has really positively surprised me with its value for money, especially after installing the custom RAT Pro firmware. It definitely won't be replacing my other meters such as my Terra P or my SC International Radiation Alert Ranger, but I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it to someone who is just starting out and looking to buy the first cheap meter to begin their journey with radiation detection. I wanna hear from you. Do you have the FS5000 meter? What are your experiences with it? And do you use the custom RAT Pro firmware? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If yes, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming uploads. Also feel free to check out my coffee page where you can donate a nice cup of radioactive coffee and support my work financially. And remember, stay active.